<laughs> Welcome to the Halloween month. And to begin with, we're about to be playing a glorious Nintendo GameCube game, Luigi's Mansion. Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Luigi here, I am the star of the show for this point. So, welcome for you all back for the likes of the Mexi Toys videos once again. And this time we're going to be doing a redo let's play of any sorts, for presumably for the third time. Because obviously we've already technically did this back in Journey Forms of it, not only in 2011, despite the fact that that particular playthrough is no longer there anymore. Mainly because of quite a number of things. First of all, the commentary is pretty bad, and not only that, the quality is even worse. So as a result, we did somehow manage to able to did this game again until 2016, all the way up to 2018 because of the forms of the celebration of the release of the Nintendo 3DS remake. Now, despite that, however, though, is that the amount of views back in Journey Forms of in 2016 and 2018, respectively, which, mind you, that was the longest gap of the entire Let's Play of Luigi's Mansion, so that's another example of why. Our second incarnation of that particular playthrough is also no longer there, mainly because about the fact that, well, the quality itself is a lot better. However, for commentary wise, it might be felt a bit too standard. So, because of this, though, and in addition to that, though, like I said before, there was a massive, massive gap for that uploading schedules alike. So, similar to the forms of how it does it in our Let's Play of uh, Banjo Tui. Hopefully we should be able to actually try to able to keep our momentum going for the uploading schedules alike. So, either way though, and here we are in 2023, that means we can able to actually do Luigi's Mansion for the Nintendo GameCube. Because as I said this before, not only does this game came out in Journey Forms of on the Nintendo GameCube, which, as a matter of fact, this game is a launch title for the Nintendo GameCube alongside with the forms of Pikmin, Super Smash Bros. Melee, and Super Monkey Ball, and a whole lot more. So as a result about the fact that this is the version we're going to be most likely focusing on, because as a result about the fact that the quality will be a much, much more nicer. So, and in addition to that though, I love the fact that once you get into the file selection screen, there is actually that little tiny text saying about the fact that it did say, Welcome to your mansion, but eventually it changes into Welcome to our mansion. So, it does give me some bit of a creepy vibes to it though. So, even then though, oh, speaking of Pikmin, there was actually view a Pikmin movie right there. I'm guessing it's like a trailer or the advertisement or something like that. So, no idea why they did not include that on the 3DS remake, but whatever. So, let's get started with Luigi's Mansion for the Nintendo GameCube. So, let us begin. So yeah, we just entered the mansion itself, and all we can do around here is about the fact that we can able to walk around by simply using the control stick, and on top of that, with the B button, which allows you to able to turn on or off the actual flashlight. Even then, I was gonna able to try to show you guys at some form or another, but if you press the A button, rather than doing jumps, so instead, Luigi can able to actually do call out Mario as the actual name applies. So, but even then though, so yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty spooky atmosphere. So, as a result, it's a good reason why that I decided able to actually do this game during the forms of the month of October. So, yeah, as you can tell, Luigi calls out for Mario. So, yeah, I'm guessing that Mario might be behind here. 
or in some cases Maui might be hiding somewhere. Although technically speaking though, it's about the fact that for that particular fact, this is technically the second Luigi game, while the first being this god awful game, which appears to be on multiple platforms, which is called Mario is Missing. But then again though, we'll probably talk more details about that in a moment, because it looks like that door has been locked. So, either way, we need to go back downstairs, and... Oh jeez. That key was floating in... in the air. Well, it seems that the key is now dropped to the floor. Hmm. Very fishy, I might add. But I suppose it really doesn't matter, because even then, we can able to obtain the key! Man, I love that fanfare. <laughs> because it always just managed to be able to crack me up every time when I hear that particular jingle right there, so... Anyway, now we've got the key, so now we need to open up this particular door. So, relatively speaking, we need to able to solve this mystery up. And this will pretty much lead us to the next room. Ouch. Oof. I sure it'd take a lot of knocks in this line of work. I'm getting too old for this ghost catching Timothy, Tom Foley. Anyway, nice to meet you. I'm Professor Egad. This house, I swear it seems to have more ghosts every day. What's a young fella like you doing around here, anywho? Uh-oh, this looks ugly. Alright, youngster, look lively. Follow me, post haste! So we have to get away from those batch of ghosts here. So your name's Luigi. I think our paths were destined to cross. Well met, Luigi. Hmm, where's this, you ask? Why, these cozy quarters are where I do my ghost studying. Professor E. Gad's Ghost Research Laboratory. The lab. If you, if you're of a shortened m mind, you won this mansion in a contest you didn't even enter. Sounds pretty fishy to me. So you believe the mansion actually exists? Then strange. I've been living here since I was a lad of twenty or so. And I'll tell you, that mansion appeared just a few days ago. The spirits have fooled you. I don't know if it's a dream, an illusion, or what all, but I surely wouldn't be too happy winning a haunted map, haunted house. Now that I get a look at you, I just recalled a guy with a Red Hat kind of like yours went up to the mansion without even stopping it to chat, and he never returns. Was he a dream too? What? That guy was your brother? Oh no, that's horrible. He wouldn't stand a chance against those ghosts without my... help. You have to go after him. Here's the plan. I'll teach you to deal th with ghosts, so you can rescue your brother Luigi. Yep, I can show you I will get this. So, either way, so something tells me, I apologize for that particular reading skills, kind of feels a bit wishy-washy, but I do know for certain for one thing because of how the fact that sometimes I never know any of the words. Whilst unlike, you know what I'm saying, Twilight Sparkle is pretty much an expert when it comes to reading, so 
Either way, so something tells me about right from the start though is that we're about to begin with a tutorial segment. So in some cases, before you start, uh, there are two different control styles you can able to set up. There's the standard or the sidestep. For me, I'm going to be going for the standard control scheme just because it's a little bit more manageable. Then on top of that, I have managed able to try out the sidestep on my own time, but uh, it might be felt a bit awkward for me. So I think personally though, the standard movements will be a heck of a lot more better. So either way though, so this is where we got ourselves the most unique contraption of ours made by the forms of Prof Professor Egad himself, or relatively speaking, oh yeah, you probably get the idea about that. So this is called the Portugas 3000. So as a result, all you can really do with this is by, you know, pressing the R button to able to activate the Portugas 3000, and you can able to actually suck up stuff. So, for instance, something tells me we're about to suck up some ghosts. So, you know, think of like Ghostbusters, except the fact that in order to able to suck these ghosts up, basically though, you have to utilize a flashlight in order to able to actually just to stun them, and then when the heart shows up, and obviously it's your job to able to actually suck them up so yeah these are orange ghosts are pretty self-explanatory to take them down because obviously they do have 10 health so yeah keep this in mind though is about the fact that the main selling point of this game in particular though is not just because of the forms of power fact that this is a uh, a new you know, graphics powerhouse back then, during the Informs of in 2001, but also about the fact that this game heavily utilizes the uh, two analog stick controls, or to be more specifically, not only the control stick, but also the C stick as well. Like, for instance, about the fact that you can able to just, well, pull back the, the opposite direction of the control stick when you're trying to able to suck up certain ghosts. Like, for instance, there's a group of them right there, even though, mind you, I somehow missed one of them, because obviously that one just got away. But that's okay, because this is just a training simulator, so even then, no, that's pretty much about it. So, yeah, that will do. How many do we get? Oh, wow, nine ghosts. Fantastic, Luigi. So, even then, no, yeah, and I'm about to be ready to look for your brother now. But before we get on to that though, I think something tells me we need to go on to the gallery first. So just in case about the fact that before you able to actually resume your adventure in the entire mansion itself, basically though is about the fact that we can able to actually look around in the entire gallery and then basically they're all entirely blank. So as a result about the fact that something tells me we do need to able to sort out certain uh, stuff here and there. So but even then though, no, yeah, that must have been said something, so but I digress. So yeah, as I mentioned this before, not only does this game came out on a Nintendo GameCube back in 2001 or 2002, for those of you who lived in Europe, and as I said before, it's a launch title for the GameCube, but also it's about the fact that during the Informs event in 2018, they saw the 3DS remake, which as a result, it does have some quite a number of features and during the Informs event in the 3DS version, which I suppose I should probably talk more details about that, uh, once we continue proceedings for this. So, keep this in mind though, I'm only going to be focusing on one version for the sake of the forms of Luigi's Mansion as far as the trilogy of games as far as I'm concerned, because, relatively speaking though, as you probably already know, that the Nintendo Switch version of Luigi's Mansion 2 will be on its way. So because of this though, I think it's a perfect opportunity that we can able to actually do the entire Luigi's Mansion trilogy for every single Halloween month for the sake of the forms of October month. So, speaking of which though, it's about the fact that, well, as you probably already know, is that today's day is of course the OSD 3rd of October today, in some cases in 2023 today. Well, not much to talk about, aside from the fact that, well, I've already explained about the forms of certain mechanics of Luigi's Mansion as the game itself, but even then, no, now let's go ahead and go back to the lab, and we can go back into the mansion so we can resume our adventure. So yes, we made our way back to the starting location of the mansion itself. So now we can able to do quite a number of things this time around, thanks to the forms of not only the Podrigast 3000, but also we somehow got ourselves a Game Boy Color? 
or to be more specifically, the Game Boy Horror. So depending on what button you press, either the X button or the Y button, or heck, even with the forms of the Z button, I believe if you do manage to press the Y button, it allows you to be able to actually access the map screen. And as far as the X button, as far as I'm concerned, basically though, it allows you to be able to activate the first person view. They can be able to scan in not only certain objects, but also certain ghosts eventually though. And on top of that, with certain mirrors, as you can tell from about a few seconds ago, where basically if you scan that particular mirror, that allows you to be able to traverse all the way back to the beginning portion of this entire mansion itself. So... Kind of interesting though, especially concerning that if you had enough doing with the forms of backtracking most of your time, well, best to short able to actually like search for the mirror and then basically just scan it and in that way it should able to transport you back in here. So, and also Toad was there. So because of that though, I'm guessing because he wants to be searching for Mario as well, but I'm pretty sure about the fact that he got freaked out a little, so because of this though, yeah, he was desperately worried, so hopefully it's up to Luigi to able to rescue Mario, so because of this though, yeah, leave it to me as far as the forms of our adventure as far as I'm concerned, so... But yeah, like I said before, it's about the fact that we are very pleased about the fact that the, uh, we can now able to actually decide to do the entire trilogy of Luigi's Mansion games now, because, you know, Luigi's Mansion 2 on the Switch is definitely coming, specifically until next year, so hopefully this might be a perfect opportunity that we can able to do these kinds of games, so, but either way, and this is also you're able to actually save the game if you ask Toad for doing this, and that's all there is to it, so, Either way though, in addition to that, the light is now back up, so because of this though, yeah, and also, since as you can tell from the bottom right corner of the screen, we can also decide to able to collect not only coins, but also with gold bars and some, uh, uh, notes, so even then though, that when it comes to able to fully 100%ing the game, uh, basically though, we're most able to collect the insane amount of cash as much as possible, because something tells me about the fact that depending on how many money you get, you get yourselves a different rank, depending on how well you did, for collecting all the actual cash and notes and all that stuff. So because of this though, yeah, not much else explanations for the sake of time, so even then though, and I believe we need to go all the way back to that particular exactly the same room as we've been into briefly, except now since we've now got ourselves the Portugal 3000, so that means we can now able to do... Uh, multiple stuff. Oh, and also there are times though it's about the fact that we need to watch out for this poison mushroom because not only you take damage from it, but also you turn shrink into small size and on top, of, on top of all that stuff though you lose a lot of money as well. So keep this in mind. So, and something tells me we somehow uh, blow out these candles. So I think something is about to happen. So Okay, right, something's worth noting for while this is going on is that, thank goodness, Disney Plus has now been fixed. So because of this, though, not only we can probably get onto the actual, like, well, recently we somehow watched, uh, four of those Treehouse of Horror episodes so far for The Simpsons, which, as a result, I'm really into it right now. But either way, that's a topic for a later time. Ow! God dang it, I somehow got hurt. But anyway though, so here we go with the forms of the first ghost types that we're about to deal with, and these guys are known as Gold Ghosts. Yeah, I'm not even joking, that's what their names are. So because of their style, yeah, basically as I said before, they do have, uh, 10 health, so these guys are very self-explanatory to deal with. So because of that though, eventually during the, at some point in the later rooms to come, that obviously we will come across into different types of ghosts, and even especially noticeable for some rare ones as well. So relatively speaking though, this will be a 400% playthrough of the game, well mind you about the fact that this is the PAL version of the game, so it was expecting to be able to have multiple differences throughout, but then again though, we'll explain more details about that once we get closer to its proceedings for this entire playthrough of Luigi's Mansion, so... Either way though, so now we take care of the forms of the gold ghosts and grab the next key, so that way we can be able to unlock the next room. So it's somewhere nearby, so it's not too far, whatever we decide able to go into. I mean, relatively speaking though, this game is going to be pretty short. Way more shorter than the forms of how it does it on not only Luigi's Mansion 2, but also Luigi's Mansion 3 as well, so... Because of that, though, is that we're going to be tra uh, traversing through the entire mansion itself, in the first game anyway. 
And compared to the Forms of Power he does it on Luigi's Mansion 2, that we're going to be traversing into multiple mansions with different theming, and also because it has mission objectives from time to time. And as far as Luigi's Mansion 3 is concerned, you're able to traverse into one entire hotel. But even then though, it's going to be filled to the brim with a lot of floors and all that stuff. I'm sure we'll pretty much get around to those games at some point during the events in 2024 and 2025, respectively, when it comes to both Luigi's Mansion 2 and Luigi's Mansion 3 for most October months, or something relates to that, so... Either way, so now we actually come across into a yet another types of ghost, and this time what appears to be Buddy forms of, well, if I'm assuming that correctly, despite the fact I somehow lost a bit of my health, because obviously if I don't pull back with the control stick, something tells me about the fact that I will able to lose some of my health. So, basically we come across into ourselves, um, let's just say... Um, purple punchers. So, yeah, they do have 28, uh, uh, 20 health. I keep thinking about an RPG game for some reason. So, yeah, I do apologize for this point, folks. But, uh, anywho. So, yeah, with the purple punchers, they are also kind of easy to deal with. And, relatively speaking, though, they do have, uh, 20 health. So, yeah, relatively speaking, though, these guys are not much of a threat either. And I think something tells me there's also yet another ghost that we somehow stumbled across into. With those green ghosts as you saw and these guys are known as garbage can ghosts because rather than why every time whenever you do decide able to try to able to suck him up basically though he decides to able to keep on tossing the bananas so and if you slip up by one banana again not only do you lose your health but also about the fact that, well, relatively speaking, though, you lose your cash as well if you do get hit. So because of that, though, you highly suggest you're able to just be very careful not able to run into those things so many times. But that doesn't stop there because if we do manage to be able to check on the right wardrobe right here, and basically if we click the A button... There's another different types of ghosts, and it's actually a rare ghost, and these are known as the Speedy Spirits, which is basically like a blue variation of uh, gold ghosts. So yeah, if you manage to able to suck up the actual, uh, the spooky, uh, or the Speedy Spirit, basically though, you get yourselves a lot of money, and in addition to that, th sometimes they actually give you some bit of drawies here and there, so... That's essentially what I was going to be aiming for when it comes to 100%ing everything for able to actually just try to able to find not only every single speedy spirit, but also about the fact that there's also yet another rare ghost that we might come across into. So either way, that pretty much takes care of everything for the wardrobe room. So we'll grab our next key. So that pretty much leads us to uh, the next hallway. So that way we can able to go ahead and investigate for that particular area. So... Speaking of which, though, as you probably already expect, that uh, we're going to be starting things off with Area 1. So I think this game does have a grand total of four areas to traverse. So, relatively speaking, though, is about the fact that, like I said before, this game is going to be pretty short, especially concerning that unlike Luigi's Mansion 2 and 3, those games are pretty lengthy. Not just because of the forms of mission structure for the sake of the forms of Luigi's Mansion 2, but also in Luigi's Mansion 3, it is actually ginormous for certain areas, so... But either way though, as well as some certain collectibles that we can able to possibly obtain as well, so... Either way, though, that's as far as I can think about this for the sake of time. So, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments down below for the question of the day. Uh, what was your absolute favorite Luigi's Mansion game you've ever played in your life? Do you like the first one a lot more? Or do you like the second one for its, uh, on-the-go experience and as well as the mission structure? I know for a lot of people seem to do not really like about the forms of the second game as much, just because of its entirely different structure. And on top of all that stuff, though, uh, do you like Luigi's Mansion 3 just because of all its expressive characters, in addition to one of the best visuals ever for the entire Nintendo Switch's lifespan or something like that? Let me know in the comments down below of what's your absolute favorite Luigi's Mansion game you've ever played. For me personally though, I would say the original, and on top of that, Luigi's Mansion 3 as well. So because of that though, I don't know about the forms within the second game, I must be quite frank. Although that again though, we'll talk more details about the forms of Luigi's Mansion 2 until specifically until next year, whilst the Switch uh, version of the game was expecting to be releasing. So, 
Either way, so we now come across into this first, or should I say, the hallway of any sort. So, relatively speaking, though, oh, by the way, be careful of those fake doors, by the way, because if you interact with them, not only do you lose a bit of health, but also you lose abundancy of coins. So, and not only that, yeah, you probably get the idea. So, yeah, if you scan on any of those uh, portrait ghosts, as you can see, Basically, though, it gives us a brief description for it. So, but even then, no. Oh, wait a minute. Something tells me, yep, I just got hit by this random book from a shelf. So, yeah, let me try to sort that out at some point. Even then, something tells me there's another speedy spirit. So, either way, not only does it give us some more money, but also we got ourselves the first rupee. So, how's that for that? And that doesn't stop there, because there is also yet another thing we're trying to find. So, first of all, let me just pick up some more coins and uh, notes alike. So, I think that should be all pretty much all sorted by then. So, is that sorted? Yeah. And uh, I just gotta make sure if these books doesn't hurt me anymore. So, now if we press the X button, and if we try to scan this cheese... Hmm... And it looks like the golden mice did somehow appear, which also gives you not only more coins, but also more notes. And, of course, we got ourselves the first emerald. So, yeah, that's actually super top-notch and everything. So, anyway, so here we are in the forms of the study room, as you can tell, because it has filled the room with books, as well as the forms of the first boss in the game, apparently. And on top of that, the first portrait ghost we're about to deal with. Yeah, you have to pay attention right there, because as soon as he starts yawning, that is your chance to able to actually uh, you have the ability to suck him up. So, and depending on how well you do, like for, for, for instance, that we somehow managed to get ourselves the biggest pearl, this actually signifies that you might able to get yourselves one of those three different rankings, depending on how well you did, if you try to able to actually deal with certain portrait ghosts. Like, for instance, as you saw, I somehow obtained the first big pearl. That pretty much guarantees us to be able to actually get ourselves the gold frame. For at least depending on what specific uh, things we go into. So, and also it shows you the forms of certain description for certain ghosts. Like, for instance, we actually did somehow manage to suck up, or to be more specifically, we somehow got the first portrait ghost, specifically, Niville, and he's basically the bookish father. So because of that though, and he's relatively speaking, he's 42 years old, at least as far as I'm concerned anyway, despite the fact that the actual small text doesn't seem to help me as much. So yeah, he was uh, 42 years old. So in a biological, it did say that he did mention that uh, novel or Neville uh, spends his afterlife reading all of the books he missed while living. So, and I believe in it, each and every single uh, uh, portrait ghost always seems to have uh, 100 health. So, concerning about the fact that you might be able to actually get the benefit for the doubt, like, you know what I'm talking about. So, and also, every time we, if you do manage to be able to scan those specific hearts for those specific portrait ghosts, they somehow manage to get the heart quotes. Like, for instance, with the forms of Neville, um, he did say something like, Ho, 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 go ahead, try to find me. I can see you, but you cannot see me. Ho, 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 ho. And I believe as soon as we move on to the next portrait ghost, one after the other, and sometimes you do need to require to able to actually catch them before you continue your progressioning. However, there are some optional ones here and there as well. That uh, if you want to know what optional means, is that you don't have to necessarily try to deal with them. But you can able to try to do that, but either way. So here we are into this next room. If you can tell already, we're actually onto the master bedroom. So because of that though... Yeah, relatively speaking, though, is about the fact that we might come across into a yet another uh, portrait ghosts right here. But uh, first of all, I just somehow managed to grab some more uh, notes that I somehow obtained. So let's see. Isn't my hair just gorgeous? Of course, I do spend a lot of time on it. I was so bored, uh, corrupted up in that painting. Now I spend all my time in front of the mirror. It seems to scare people, though, so everything is coming up roses. Hmm, I can see the point there. 
But of course, we need to take you down though, because obviously, the main emphasis on this though, you have to blow the curtains open, and that way you should able to stun her, and you should able to actually suck her up as well, so... Although, if you actually didn't get the, uh, the big pearl for that particular result, uh, you able to actually get the silver frame or the bronze frame, depending on what performance you did, so... And I think I do need to get some bit of more health and during at some point in the last bit for this entire Area 1, so... And it seems to be more specifically, we've almost done with Area 1, so Area 1 is gonna be pretty short, so... Anyways though, so that pretty much leads us to the next room that we can able to interact with, so... Yeah, let me go ahead and, uh, check the actual description of, uh, this next ghost called, uh, uh, Leda. Uh, Leda, she's probably 34 years old, and she said the description for it, she's, uh, stashed her secret savings away to prepare for her long afterlife. Okay, that seems very self-explanatory right there. Oh jeez, that baby's crying. And it's coming from that particular room over there. Oh yeah, every once in a while, there are some uh, ghost mouses everywhere, so yeah, you might consider just trying to able to just, you know, suck them up if you can. So just in case you don't want to get hit by them so many times, so... Either way, let's get into this next room right here. Into... The last bit of Area 1, known as Nursery. This has a lot of fill to the brim with baby stuff, like this rocking horse, including the actual uh, teddies on shelves, and also this very strange ball was actually in place. So, either way, let's go ahead and scan this particular heart of this particular baby ghost right here, and he states this. Horsey, rocky horsey. And something tells me he was asleep. So, I think something tells me we need to able to utilize the Poltergeist 3000 to pretty much um, try to able to make the horsey decide to able to rock back and forth. And once we're done with that, the door has been trapped itself. And he seems he wants to play with me. Which, I think he might be a little bit more intimidating look to it though. So, yeah, we do need to able to try to go ahead and grab the ball. And once we're able to grab the ball, um, can I? Oh, okay. I pretty much keep on thinking about not only Luigi's Mansion 2, but also Luigi's Mansion 3 as well. And then you blow the ball back at him, though. And I think, relatively speaking, now we might as well able to come across into the true boss of Area 1. So I think, relatively speaking, though, his name was Chunsei, the spoiled baby, as far as I'm usually concerned with that particular description for it. So, either way though, it seems to be more specifically though, I was expecting I was trying to able to find the another description for this Chunsei baby, but even then. Alright, so here we go on to face off against with Chansey, the spoiled baby, as you can tell. So yeah, he's pretty simple and probably the easiest uh, boss in the game. Mainly because about the fact that all you have to really do is about the fact that once he starts summoning these ginormous balls over here, basically though, it's your chance to able to actually do the exactly the same strategy as before, except if you manage to able to hit him, basically it's your chance to able to suck uh, quite a lot of health on him though, and like any forms of power it does on most of those portrait ghosts, they all have 108, um, 100 health, so... And, uh, well, speaking though, I don't think it's possible you can able to actually instantly manage to able to suck all of the actual, uh, health up, or anything else like that, unlike in any other bosses throughout. But even then, though, well, speaking though, sometimes, though, you have to able to go through multitude of phases, so... I mean, so far, we actually did manage to able to, to, like, suck up, uh, let's just say, uh, 49, um, health for Chunsei, so that's actually a pretty good start. So maybe it's a possibility we can able to actually suck up like 50 health or something like that. But I suppose we'll might as well find out exponentially. So 
And even then though, if you try to able to scan his heart while he was attacking, I believe that he did say eight different words. Like, for instance, that stay away. So, yeah, that's why I was... Oh, gosh! I was off by one health left. I suppose it really doesn't matter because he's almost down anyway, so... Oh well, no big deal, but at least we can able to actually just go ahead and try to keep on dodging his attacks. Oh yeah, something's worth noting for, this is another example of why I'm focusing on the GameCube version of Luigi's Mansion, not the 3DS version, because I will admit though, the loading times on the 3DS version is a little bit worse than the Advanced Atari does on the superior GameCube version in my opinion, and on top of that, the controls on the 3DS version is a bit cumbersome, so, which I'll explain more details about that, for the likes of the forms of not only on Tuesdays, but also on Thursdays as well, so that's my, uh, uploading schedules for this game it's, uh, itself, so either way, Area 1 is completely done, thanks to the forms of that particular glorious Portugust 3000, and on top of that with this amazing victory uh, fanfare, so even then, and John C was only one year old, okay, he cries loudly and never sleeps through the night, but since he was born a ghost, this seems natural. Okay, that seems kind of natural to me either way. So, either way, let's go and open up this bigger treasure chest to contain the special shaped key, which actually signifies a heart. So I think something tells me, with that particular door, as we saw, like, covered in the forms of those thorns, that, oh, by the way, every time any of you do manage to touch the thorned door, uh, you lose your bit of health, and also you lose coins as well, so keep this in mind. And I believe about the fact that since we've now got ourselves the heart-shaped key, that way we can now able to actually entering into uh, the next area. So because of that though, yeah, this is going to be quite of an interesting experience when it comes to experiencing one of the mansions that we can able to go into. So, and I believe every time when if you do manage to able to grab the special shaped key, we obviously return into the forms of this particular place where basically we can able to turn those ghosts into paintings. So, that'll be the actual uh, specific way that we can able to just, well, put those portrait ghosts back into its painting. So there goes those portrait ghosts. By the way, I always love this scene, by the way, because it always gets like a sense of accomplishment, and even then, a lot more satisfying to boot, so... And it's gonna go for multitude of machine contraptions there. And this is what they get exchanged. Like, we've got ourselves the gold frame, and another gold frame, and another gold frame. So, it's a pretty good start. Despite I did get hit quite a few times for certain ghosts, but that's okay, because obviously we'll grab some more uh, coins, money, and all that stuff. And occasional points for, uh, you know, not only uh, rubies, but also emeralds, and other stuff in general. So, yeah, so far we've only captured three portrait ghosts, or portrait ghosts, so far. So... Looking good so far, especially like I said before, we actually come across into gold frames basically, so... And every time when if you finish the area, it does the actual tally of uh, how much coins you gathered, including all the gold bars you gathered, and even certain pearls as well. So that's our total for that so far, so looking good so far. And also, I really love the music by the way, which it sounds pretty bopping, so even though I always love that tune. So, yeah, let's go back into the mansion, and suffice to say, I think we should probably end things off at this point right here. So join me next time for more of Let's Play of Luigi's Mansion for the Nintendo GameCube slash Nintendo 3DS versions. It's that we're about to be begin, Area 2. So as a result, it might get a bit lengthy, so yeah, I'll see you guys until on Thursday. Later, fellas.